Why does the Tesla Semi keep breaking down? The company's most recently launched product has created a lot of hype around the semi truck industry, and for good reason. There's a massive market opportunity, and the value proposition for electric semi trucks is unmatched when compared to diesel or natural gas. But there are some really significant issues that the Tesla Semi is facing when it comes to reliability and durability, raising cause of concern around the sustainability of the electric powertrain, or perhaps how Tesla is approaching the problem. Now, had Tesla launched a semi-truck like it initially planned to in 2019, some of these issues would not have been that big of a deal. But because it's been more than seven years since this truck was announced back in 2017, there are some serious concerns around the EV industry if the Tesla Semi keeps breaking down like it currently is. Not only did Tesla just face its first recall of more than 35 trucks, but with the insane tailwinds we're seeing from tax credits and incentives for electric semi-trucks, Tesla's brand image and its role in marketing the benefits of electric powertrains is something that could be hurt with the way that the Tesla Semi launch is currently going. So in this video, I want to go over some of the speculation around why the Tesla Semi has been breaking down, as well as understanding some of the realistic reasons for why this might be happening and whether or not we should even be expecting this from a product at such stage. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's understand where the Tesla Semi project is today and what's been going on over the past few weeks, in which we've seen some of the most biggest developments for this project since its launch in December. First of all, as I'm sure many of you have heard, the Tesla Semi faced a major recall at the end of last month, where its parking brake module would apparently fail, resulting in the truck being in an unsafe position to be parked safely. However, when it comes to the durability of the Tesla Semi, this parking brake issue is not the real problem because companies like Frito-Lay and Pepsi, as you can see, have already been testing out the Semi, which obviously was the first vehicle to be delivered to their specific electric fleets. And it seems like the tests so far have not been going as smoothly as many people had initially thought it would. If the truck is pulled to the side of a highway like it is right now, and being towed by a tow truck for class eight semi trucks, it's most likely not a problem with a parking brake. Instead, it could be serious problems with the high voltage systems, the induction electric motors, the transmission system, or something to do with the software and energy management. Because obviously don't forget, this truck is hauling more than an 850 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, which obviously does not weigh anything less than four to 5,000 pounds. And this right here is where we're starting to see speculation from the investment and engineering community on why this might be happening. And one of those speculations is the idea that Tesla could be facing a software glitch where the dash would automatically turn off in the middle of a driving experience, resulting in the driver having to pull over to the side of the road as a safety precaution. But it's unclear whether or not this was verified by Tesla's own engineering team or whether or not this was related to every single Tesla semi breakdown, which right now is counted towards north of 11. And although a software update would be an easy fix to this kind of problem, it isn't as simple as many people might be thinking it out to be. Because if your dash goes put when the only thing available to the driver's peripherals is the dash, that's not a great sign for the validation of the product's market fit and potentially indicates at a design review very much in the works. Because let's be honest, conventional drivers for diesel and natural gas trucks have already voiced concerns around how the Tesla Semi's dash and interior is positioned with a central driving position surrounded by two massive screens. There's not a single button in sight and there seems to be no space for a sleeper cab, which is something Tesla is intended to design into apparently the same chassis. 
And on top of that, a dash that is turning off could also be attributed to the electrical system, whether that be the fuse box being faulty or the relays in the hardware side being misused. That could not just be fixed with an over the air update. It could be an issue with some of the suppliers or the system integration of that specific power management module. So although the speculation looks very reasonable, there are a lot of variables that need to be considered. And since this has not been verified by Tesla or any third party engineers, there are still more issues at hand than solutions. Because it's important to keep in mind that there's a difference between durability and reliability. The footage that Tesla showed in their launch presentation on December 1st was footage showing the durability of the vehicle meaning the components are designed to go through hardcore testing for water ingress, hardware, and gyroscope related metrics. However, in terms of reliability, there's very little data on just how reliable every single component and the system integration techniques that Tesla is using truly are. And it seems like right now with the pilot testing phase that the semi is going through, which believe it or not, is not mass production, those reliability issues are surfacing. And since Tesla already coined out the idea that they would be using their innovative new 4680 cell design in the battery pack for the vehicle, we can rule out any major issues that might be happening with the battery itself. There could not be a major issue with the battery, but that doesn't mean there could not be a major issue with the electrical system and specifically in the dual motor design. And why would that be the case? Well, because Tesla is using a dual clutch system instead of a traditional transmission to transmit power to both of the rear axles. One axle would be performing acceleration, whereas the other one will be performing highway driving, which obviously is a much lower gear ratio than what you need for acceleration. And so there could certainly be issues that this system could be facing in testing which obviously would require drivers to pull over to the side of the road and require significant maintenance. Despite these technical issues, however, Tesla still expects to ramp up to 50,000 production units by 2024. If you ask me, that is a significant milestone that's going to require a lot of effort from the company, not only just from a capital perspective, but particularly from a technological perspective, whether that be fixing the issues of infrastructure and charging or fixing out the reliability issues with their prototypes. And for those wondering why I'm calling the Tesla Semi a prototype, because right now it is only in pilot production according to Tesla's own website. Pilot production is still a product development phase. This is not mass production. As a matter of fact, this is considered to be the last stage before mass production in the product development cycle. Meaning despite Tesla having touted their first deliveries in December, these are still just a form of beta testing. Whether this should be expected for a product that was delayed by more than seven years, I'll let you guys decide the answer to that question. All I know is that the Tesla Semi, although was a very good product on paper, turns out is not performing as well in real life. This will certainly change over the next few years. And given that the electric semi truck market is expected to be worth more than $15 billion by 2030, I certainly hope that's the case. What do you guys think? Is Tesla over promising and under delivering? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.